Hey, is this thing on? Hello, hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for being here. And if you love content surrounding the 12 week year, especially the modifications that I've made in the simplified 12 week year process, definitely stick around. Go ahead and subscribe because this is one of my favorite topics to discuss and share more information with all of you about on this channel. So, you know, if I'm here with my clipboard and my printed out spreadsheet, we are getting into a bit of a review or update about how my 12 week year is going so far. Um, I could not find my usual clipboard. It has gone missing, but I'm trying out this little like portable laptop holder thing that also like doubles as a soft writing surface. So far, so good. I really do like it. I like the size as well. I haven't taken it on the go, but I'll let you all know how that works when I do. All right, so a quick reminder, this is my second 12 week year and it's going really, really well. Um, my first 12 week year I felt was very successful, but this time I really tried to focus on defining my goals a little bit more. Um, and instead of my usual like halfway kind of update about how my goals are going, in this video I really wanted to focus on sharing what I've learned so far during my 12 week year and how it's benefited me personally. I definitely feel like, yes, hitting the goals is a really important piece of it, but the growth and the mindset shifts that come from um, really focusing on the 12 week year and putting my full effort into it have been so beneficial and I've already seen major changes in my life so far. So currently I am on week eight, so just a little bit over that halfway point. And as a refresher, I chose to focus on five different categories for my 12 week year. Um, and those are home, personal, business, health and finance. So I have learned something very specific that's related to each of these separate categories. And I'm gonna go into details about some of those things today. So first is my home goal, which was to finish decorating our primary bedroom. The progress is going really, really well. and I'm so happy with the results so far. Um, but during this process, I was displaced from my bedroom for about a week and honestly like two weeks without a bed frame. So that was definitely a challenge for me. And something that I learned throughout this process is I need to have designated spaces for everything. I feel like it adds so much balance and order in my life. I really love to be organized. And so being displaced, even though I was still in my home, just definitely was not something that I enjoyed at all. Um, and we typically would have moved into the guest room while the primary bedroom was being worked on. Um, but me not thinking this through or planning accordingly, I decided to fully go forward with the idea of having a home gym and transitioning our guest room from a guest room to a home gym. So it was just like both spaces were being worked on at the same time and our guest room was a complete disaster and there was no way that we would have been able to sleep in there. Plus that mattress makes my back hurt. So it just would not have worked out. So we actually pulled our box spring and our um, mattress into the living room. So in our living room, we have like an L-shaped sofa on one side. So literally where our rug would typically go, our area rug, we had our box spring and our mattress on top of that and then like the side table for the sofa became like my side table for my bed where i had like my water and my medicine and the stuff that i would need like immediately um but i didn't have everything y'all know i have like i use a lot of stuff i have a lot of different routines that i like for my evenings and my mornings so it was really hard not being able to access those things as easy as i typically would next getting into what i've learned about my personal goal which was to focus on my skincare which is face body and everything included is that moisture is so important um, we had a quite a few like cold days. We actually had like a winter freeze type of situation um, come through Houston and my skin was dry. It was like, girl, please help us. So y'all know I've been trying out some new products during this time and I really like them. So right now I'm using the Frenchie line at their cashmere vanilla. So I use their body wash and also they have a like milk hydrating lotion and like a body serum stick. I really like to use all of those three combined. But then for added moisture, I use like the brown, I think it's like cocoa scented, um, I was gonna say cocoa flavor, I don't think it's flavored, uh, but cocoa scented like baby oil gel. 
Um, so typically like you would see the one that has like the green cap and you can see little gel beads inside. Well, it's the same thing, but instead of being that like aloe scent, it's the cocoa scent and it pairs really nicely with the layering for the Frenchie products that I'm using in cashmere vanilla. And it also is like a great in shower moisturizer. So after I use body wash, then I go in with a moisturizing scrub as well. So again, moisture, moisture, nothing that's gonna strip my skin, and I kind of seal that all in with that body oil for an in shower moisturizer. Then after that, I can use the serum and the moisturizer, and then I also, on top of that, layer with a cream. Um, I forget what it's called. Oh, it's is it Butter Drop? I'd have to check. I'll put it on my screen if it's not, but it's from Fenty Beauty, and it's their Thick Luscious Cream that will lock in your moisture so much so i really learned about the importance of making sure that i'm layering my skincare to get the most benefits next up is my business so you all can see the progress that we have made so far we're almost to a thousand subscribers at the point that i am filming this video we're at 966 hopefully that'll go up before the video is actually edited and posted so thank you all so much for being a part of this community but my overall goal for the 12 week year was to monetize my channel so yes to reach 1000 subscribers but with that i also have to reach 4000 watch hours which is definitely a lot Harder. So I've been trying to come up with new strategies to get my watch hours up. I actually just attended a like growth strategy call with Montel B and Tony Scott, who is the brand manager of Raven Elise, also her mom. It was so great. I gained so much insight from that call. But I also learned so far throughout this 12 week year that I really need to streamline my content. Y'all know, I love all the things. I love to talk about all the things that bring me joy. I like lifestyle content, I like advice content, coaching content, fashion content, and pretty much everything in between because I feel like that's what makes me my dream woman and well-rounded and I wanna share all those things with everyone. Um, but also, YouTube gets confused. They're like, girl, what what is the focus of your channel? So definitely focusing on streamlining. I just planned out an amazing month of content for March that I'm super excited about. It's extremely detailed and just so on brand for me. Um, I'm gonna make a video about how I use a digital planner, hopefully. Right now, it's just like written down in a planner. If it goes well, you will see that digital planner video coming out shortly. But I also realized that I really like content batching. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting content out to the community and my audience regularly, but realistically, like, Filming content every single day is not sustainable for me with everything else that I have going on in my schedule. And I also feel like it can like interrupt my flow of creativity if I'm like, oh wait, now I have to stop and go do this. I'll pick it back up tomorrow. I'll pick it back up later this week. So content batching has been something that I am really enjoying. So I spend a day planning all of my content for the month. Then I spend a day focused on kind of like the back end things. Um, I have not done my like thumbnail creation day yet, but I do need to get that done as well. Um, but I focus on like making my description boxes. If I'm gonna be doing a voiceover, planning out what I'm gonna be talking about so like the administrative pieces are done the filming is done then at that point all I have to do is edit and put everything together complete my thumbnails into a beautiful package for all of you to consume so I don't feel like ugh, I'm constantly trying to figure out when to film and I also like to film a lot on the go like if I know that I'm gonna be going somewhere that has like a cute background then I'll probably wear one of my pink lily outfits because I am a pink lily ambassador snap a pic I'm out having fun doing something that I enjoy in life and I can take a quick picture that I can also share with you all so you can find out more about the brand and see the clothes in action. So it's super easy for me to content batch and I'm definitely going to be sticking to this routine because it makes my content creation so much more enjoyable. And I can also tell from the views that I've been getting recently that you all are enjoying that content as well. So thank you again so much for all of your support. All right, my health goal was to have abs by April. Okay, I didn't specify how many abs. I feel like I am starting to see my two abs poking out here at the top for sure. The bottom abs, 
mm -mm, we're still working on those. Um, but what I've learned is that I don't necessarily need a group or a class or a large gym type atmosphere in order to be really focused and committed to my health and fitness goals, which was exciting because I was on class pass before. I'd also tried out burn boot camp and I was still paying for my Pilates studio. And I'm like, why do I have all of these like fitness bills everywhere when really like I could just try to be committed and work on it myself which is one of the main reasons that we decided to go ahead and go with the home gym option so um, the gym is still being set up but I just like find a space in there and I still commit to my workouts one thing that helps me is planning them out so, like in my calendar from 8 to 9 a.m. It doesn't just say workout time. It specifically says, okay, I'm gonna do a 20 minute ride on Peloton, and then I'm gonna do a 15 minute core finisher. And I try to like bookmark them in the Peloton app as well. So it's a like quick, easy access for me to go in and no excuses or time wasted. And I'm still like really putting in the effort. Um, so that was kind of exciting to see. Like the external motivation was something that I thought I needed, but I don't necessarily. I still enjoy it, but also like I enjoy working out on my own because these are my own personal fitness goals. And finally, we are on to the finance goal, which was to have one no spend week every month this year. So, so far so good. I completed my first one successfully, no spending. This one I did spend, I actually spent yesterday, but I did set a budget for my spending um, and it was for YouTube. So I feel like it's kind of like a plus and a minus sign. So I put both in the box. Um, so while I did spend, yes, that was not working toward my goal, but it's also a plus because I spent on some like planner stickers and things because I'm going to be sharing some information about how to combine um, the 12 week year with a vision board. So I got some digital planners um, and some digital planning, well, a digital planner and some digital planning stickers. Um, but I set my budget for $20 and I was able to get a lot of really great stuff within that. And then I also realized some graphics and pictures that I already had and like my files on my phone could be imported into the GoodNotes app and I could use those too. So I didn't have to buy a ton of things. Um, I'm gonna be creating that video for you all and then hopefully over time, like I can get more into digital planning because I think it's something that I'm definitely going to like. Um, but that's besides the point. What I learned about myself with this financial goal is it's too easy for me to spend small amounts of money. I buy something for $20 here, $30 there, $15, $7, but it definitely starts to add up. So I actually started using a zero-based budget worksheet and just tallying like the little things that I've purchased here and there was definitely very eye-opening for me to see like, wow, I've got to get into a good habit of not saying, oh, okay, yeah, I need that or I want that or I could use that and going ahead and buying it. It's so simple with like Apple Pay, like it's, you don't even have to have your card on you at this point. Um, but I definitely wanna get into a healthier habit and mindset surrounding that small spending and assess a lot more to really focus more on minimalism and only getting what I absolutely need or things that I'm like, yeah, this makes me really happy. This sparks a lot of joy. I'm gonna keep it and use it for a long period of time. So definitely have been learning a lot about my finances throughout this journey. If you don't have a budget, I think that a zero-based budget worksheet is very, very helpful. I am probably gonna make some like more detailed content about that um, maybe next month so we can all work on our financial goals together. Um, but now I'm back on track. I did need something for that video, so I did make a purchase, but other than that, I have not spent on like grabbing anything or any shopping. So I am pretty proud of how things are going so far. So that's the update week eight on how my second 12 week year has been going so far, but more specifically the lessons that I've learned and the things that I've gained and benefits that I've gained as well up until this point. So of course I will update you all when we reach the end of our 12 weeks. And I'm so excited to share the next venture into the 12 week year kind of content that I like, um, which is going to be about vision boarding and how that makes a huge impact on the success of your 12 week year. Again, thank you all so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Please give this video a thumbs up so people who have not seen my content can check in and follow along on the progress of my 12 week year. I'll see you next time. Like, comment, and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Affirmations with Amber.